Chief Meteorologist Tim Buckley coming to you. This is Thursday evening here. Thursday evening. Just want to set the stage on where Dorian is now. Of course, it is a hurricane moving closer to the U.S., where it might be going, what we know for Florida, and more importantly, what we know for us here in North Carolina. Kind of setting the scene, if we look on a wide view, this is Hurricane Dorian spinning here on this Thursday evening. It's left the Caribbean behind. That's where it spent a lot of time over the last couple of days. Your geography there's the Dominican Republic. There's Puerto Rico, which is actually getting more rain today than they did yesterday. The storm went to the Virgin Islands just to the east of them, and now they're getting caught up in a lot of that rain on the backside of Hurricane Dorian as that storm continues to move up to the north and to the west. Up next, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas. They are the islands in the line of fire from Dorian at this point. Through Thursday evening, just a Category 1 storm. I say that just, but still packed winds at 85 miles per hour. It has not been strengthening over the last day, but that is expected to start to change. As we show you this forecast cone, keep in mind it could be on either side of this cone. Whenever you look at this, it could track to the south or to the north. That's what the cone is meant to do, show you kind of the range of possibilities. So by Saturday, notice here, these are the Bahamas, all these little small dots you see on your screen. It's already intensified to a category three at that time. There's very warm water here in the mid and upper 80s water temperatures that should allow the hurricane to gain even more strength as it gets closer to Florida right here. This is Florida. Notice a category four hurricane by Sunday evening and then by Monday evening coming ashore somewhere along the east coast of Florida. What we don't really know right now is exactly where within that cone the storm will ultimately track. There are some possibilities that bring it closer to Miami. There are others that bring it closer to Jacksonville, Florida, up near the Georgia line. So there are a lot of possibilities. But the key thing to notice is see how this is slowing down Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That slow, slow motion is bad news. It really means it could meander around Florida for several days. Here in North Carolina, where we are, we're watching very closely, and I think we'll need to continue just to watch closely. It's not known right now exactly how the storm will exit Florida. Will it turn to the north? Will it head farther to the west? Those are both still options at this time. And I'll show you a little bit of what I look at behind the scenes. These are called spaghetti models or computer models. I call them spaghetti models because of how they look, right? But each one of these lines shows you a different computer with a different idea on the storm as it's trying to forecast it. They are all very similar and tightly clustered going into Florida, but they start to diverge after that. Some of them take it up the coast, some of them take it farther off to the west, others kind of sit it around here for several days. Based on all that information that I'm seeing, I can tell you this, Florida, anywhere from Jacksonville to Miami, needs to be on high alert, okay? Up to the North Carolina coast, kind of a medium to heightened level of concern. Watch, be having a hurricane plan ready to go at this stage in the game, but it's just not known if it'll impact the North Carolina coast severely or not. Here at home in the Piedmont, we're in the inland portions of North Carolina, a lower concern right now, but we should still be watching because it is possible next week that we could see some wind or rain if the storm tracks closer to us. Summing it all up for you, Lodorian is approaching Florida by Labor Day. We know that that is key at this point and it will be slowing down too. It's likely to turn north at some point but I don't know exactly when and exactly what that path will look like. Any impacts here in North Carolina, they would not be until Wednesday at the earliest of next week. That means your Labor Day weekend here in North Carolina, it's fine. No matter what, you can take that to the bank. Some of those possible tracks that our computers are spitting out here, there are a few different ones. Maybe the most common one is a possible track. We'll call it track number one that would bring it inland over Florida, somewhere around here, and then track it inland over the southeast. That looks pretty likely to me at this point. On a track like that, what we would typically see in the triad would be a good amount of wind and a good amount of rain. That would likely be late next week if that were to happen. Another track that sometimes has been been shown in the models is for it to cross Florida completely, then go up the gut here on the western side of the Appalachian Mountains. That would be our best case scenario, honestly, because we would not see much wind or rain or a tornado threat or anything like that. Another bad option for North Carolina would be what if it misses the Florida coast, just kind of sits here for a couple of days, then comes up like this. That's similar to what Hurricane Matthew did, and that would be very bad news for storm surge at the coast, and we too would see a good amount of wind and rain in that scenario. Another option, if you can believe it, would be for the storm to hang out here for several days, go to the north, and exit stage right. Yes, that could happen. 
it's possible. Not likely, but possible. As of now, we will continue to watch and wait as all these possibilities remain on the table. In the meantime, our weather, well, it's pretty quiet. We are high and dry with lots of sunshine for Saturday, for Sunday, all the way into Labor Day Monday. Again, if we see any impacts around here, it will not be until Wednesday.